Uh, yes, this is war, absolute war. Between armyworm moss, armyworms, and drought, we're declaring war. We're gonna start to fight back. Here we go. All right, so in one of my last videos, we're out here cutting this Bermuda out front, which has new seating on it, moth after moth after moth, armyworm moss. You know that they're in here laying eggs. About 20, 28 days later, you're gonna have a bunch of armyworms. And I showed you guys how to test it. Watch that last video. Let me go over and show you the next war zone. This is my next war zone. This is that land clearing project. I had all kinds of germination of grasses and turnips and everything else in here. And then all of a sudden, it just all disappeared. Drought. We went through a three week drought, then had three tenths of an inch, and then we haven't had rain in another two weeks. It is dry as dust on this property. And sadly, I was supposed to have my 10 day forecast showed Wednesday and Thursday with 40%. That just dropped down to 20%. I said, I'm through with this. So we got the big irrigation sprinkler. We're irrigating out of the pond here. And uh, also I'm going around and I'm looking and a lot of this grass, this small grass is actually cut off at the top, army worms. So I'm actually over here spraying and treating for army worms as well too. But man, I gotta run this irrigation system. And then let me show you war zone number three. This is war zone number three. <laughs> I come out here and I'm spraying with a hose end sprayer and I'm mixing my own permethrin in here. Armyworm, armyworm moth, armyworm moth, armyworm. I mean, within a three foot circle, I'll have 20 of them in here. So I know what's coming. This is a brand new seeding of perennial rye. I am absolutely declaring war on these things. And every morning I come out here. Matter of fact, I'll go over here, I'll bet you I can find a bunch of dead moth. I mean, it's like every step I take, look, dead moth. I mean, they're just everywhere in here. I mean, it's going to start to stink pretty soon. Look at this. Dead moth. Dead moth. Dead moth. Dead moth. I mean, they're everywhere There's in here. One. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. I mean, they're just all in here. I, I have never seen army wor worm moss this bad. Next zone. Let's go to the next zone. Okay, so there's the pond. We were irrigating this. And I ordered a whole bunch of two inch lay flat hose. And I am going running that all the way up to the field, which is almost, which is over 400 feet. So here we go. Okay. So maybe I'll just throw up video of us working out here today. But now I have my other 1250 big irrigation sprinkler out here and we're running this. This field was absolutely lush. We got tons of seed out here. It's dry as dust. I mean, literally like concrete. You take a hammer to it. So we ran this for um, just about an hour and 15 minutes. And I finally, the soil looks finally healthy. It smells good. I've got to get this field alive for these for these deer. They The deer here depend on this. So the other thing I've done, I've been watering every day, having to come out and water the vegetable garden, and I'm running it off the deep well, which concerns me a little bit. I don't like it because we run the house off the deep well. So last year I hooked up this little configuration, which is just a little T-in with, um, with a shutoff nozzle here. And I actually tied in my garden hose, three quarter inch garden hose, and now I'm able to actually water the garden. While this is running for an hour, I can go up here and feel free to water all I want in the garden. It is such a good feeling. Man, we are gonna win this war. I'm so tired of this drought. And I'm so tired of all this time and money we've invested in this. And uh, basically, this whole field was just browning out, and now, and you just smell it. It's coming alive versus being dust. Yes, we are winning this war. I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> oh, I feel so good to win. Feel so good to win. So we just spent the past what 45 minutes? <laughs> 
laying hose. Okay, so the pond is way down there. That's where this whole process starts with an intake, the pump, and then you'll see a blue hose that runs all the way up, all the way up, and all the way up into that field over there. So we got a mix of new and old hose, and what did I say? We're gonna have a leak somewhere. <laughs> I don't want to say the word. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, uh, fortunately, Tractor Supply didn't have a whole bunch of parts, but I have enough to get it hooked up. So I just want to check. I might have to. These are the tips. This is a 1250 irrigation large sprinkler, and I may have to increase the tip. But let me show you one little feature I left on this. So to battle this drought, I've got like 300 feet of regular garden hose running down to my deep well but here's what i did last year i got smart and i tied in i tied in a uh, valve with a garden hose connector on it so now while this is running i can i can actually run a hose over to my vegetable garden so if i let this thing run for 30 45 minutes i can go over here at the same time and water that garden without having to tap into my deep well, which always concerns me. I don't necessarily want to use the well for what we use for our house on a vegetable garden, so that should save us a little bit, hopefully. Here. Here are now officially 5 0. Uh, Just one hold. Off. See if they work. Testing one, two. Yo. We're good. bunch of air coming out at first. Okay. That's what I was afraid of. Kinks. Do not want kinks in my hose. Just see if you see any links or leaks. It's just about perfect, man. So, even with a little bit of a breeze blowing this way, I'm still reaching pretty good. So, now I can let that thing run and run and run. I can leave it a whole tank of gas, will run about an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes. And I just let this stuff first run, man. I might actually move it back this way a little bit. So anyways, we just got a couple little leaks. We just get some clamps, put some clamps on those, and they're not major. It's just because I only use one clamp on it, so. The light here. Just need to get another clamp on that. God, it's so dry, dude. It's dry. Thank you, Kelly. All right, so John's heading down there. He's going to shut off the pump and what I'm gonna do is I think I've got a number I don't know what number tip I've got in this thing but I'm gonna put a number 10 on it and it'll allow for more flow my only concern is will it actually reach where I want I know it'll allow more gallons per minute but will it actually reach if it, as long as it reaches where I want it to reach the same distance but more flow I'm good there we go In full. Just give me a minute and uh, I'll tell you when to turn it back on and then once you turn it on stay there in case I need to change it back. Okay. Okay, go ahead flip the switch to on and give it a short pull. Okay. Alright, go ahead and fire it up. 
So I had a seven, went to a 10. Something's weird going on with the 10. So now I got a nine in there. Let's see what the nine does. Hopefully, knock on wood. Baby, come on, be right, be the right one. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that looks great. Yeah. See, now I'm hitting, I'm even hitting the gravel road now. Hell, it may even hit me. Woo, that's a beautiful sight. All right, that's the right tip. You can come back up. Yeah, that's perfect. All right. So that little junction section there that I left from last year where I have a garden hose and a valve on it. I've got my garden hose running up to the garden now. Turn it on. Turn it back a little bit so it sprays. See the pressure on it? Yeah. Okay, shut it off. Shut it off. And it doesn't impact that much at all. So now... I can come up here and water all I want because I'm running from the pond. So one of my concerns, one of my concerns has been I'm tied into, I've been watering on this garden off my deep well, which goes to the house. And I'm like, I know it's 600 feet deep and there's probably endless water. But the word is probably. <laughs> probably yeah. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to have to keep coming up here and watering my garden off my main well. The other two lawns were running off a shallow well that we don't use. That's the old shallow well from the old house. But man, I feel so much better, man. I come up here and water this shit. Now that that's running, man, it's nice. It doesn't seem to impact that flow much at all. You're getting good for a lot, don't you? Yeah. When I turn this on, it's really not so. Hallelujah. War has begun and we are winning. So yes, war has begun. <laughs> I got so tired. It's such a helpless feeling to have all these projects, all this seeding going on and taking care of all this wildlife and then just to have no rain whatsoever. Thank God I have that pond because last year we irrigated two fields off of it. This year, this front seeding the back seating are running off my shallow well and I'm trying to be real conservative. They can go dry. My deep well is strictly for the house, but I was stealing temporarily for the garden. Now I don't have to worry about that. That area over here, the clearing, now I got a sprinkler on it. Now I got all that lay flat hose going up there. I feel so much better. I just, it, it really was kind of a helpless feeling. We've got all this seed, we've got clover. I've got chicory coming in. We're gonna be planting some chicory. I'm gonna be planting some kale next month. Uh, we've got the brassica, we've got turnip, all that stuff that we're up there planting for the wildlife and the deer. And it's just like, it starts to germinate, the drought moves back in and it all just dies off. Dealing with these army worms, you guys have gotta get out. Now watch my last video, I put up a video about dealing with these army worms, actually going out and killing the moths and then testing to see if you have army worms and dealing with those army worms. And I put links down, I put links to all the products and stuff I'm using. But here, on this lawn out here, I've actually got that contractor mix is actually coming up. So I've got to keep water on this. That's a mix of rise and fescues out here to sort of take over when this Bermuda sort of starts to go dormant, dormant, dormant. So it's really doing well. The backyard, that perennial rye, it looks like it's going to come up nice. It's starting to get all green and thick. It's going to start, let's hope, knock on wood. And I'll keep you updated on the seedings. And just follow hits. Make sure you're subscribed uh, so that you see. I'll keep doing updates on this. And I'll show you guys what's going on. Are we going to win this war? Are we going to lose it? I don't know. But I was so excited. I saw 40% for Wednesday and Thursday. Now it's down to like 15 and 10. It's, it's not going to break. So I'm not going to run out of water in the pond. I know that because we've seen this get really low and that dam was damaged. Anyways, that's about it. Figured I'd just take you along and show you the battle. Talk to you later. Doc.